we have discussed the degeneracy of the 3d harmonic oscillator in our previous video we have seen that for the ground state where n equal to 0 degeneracy is 1 because the ground state is the single state for the first excited state when n equal to 1 we got three states corresponding to the same energy value which means the degeneracy of that energy level is 3. I have calculated all these values by using this formula. Just put n equal to 1 or 2 or 3 or maybe 0 and find out the degeneracy of the 3D harmonic oscillator. Let us discuss operators used in harmonic oscillators or maybe in other quantum mechanical problems. We will now be discussing commutation relations and the ladder operators. I will obviously explain why these are called ladder operators. Ladder operators we have encountered in our previous videos also. These are the operators which are increasing and decreasing the energy values. Now the angular momentum in classical mechanics are defined like this. These are not operators in classical mechanics and these are simultaneously computable. That means I can simultaneously calculate Lx, Ly, Lz in classical mechanics only. But in quantum mechanics, we know that the dynamical variables are represented by the operators. So I have written Lx cap, Ly cap, Lz cap instead of just Lx, Ly, Lz in classical mechanics. As this position and momentum, these are also dynamical variable. It changes its value with time and it represents physical quantity. So these are needed to be written in terms of operators. So these are my angular momentum operators in quantum mechanics. But uh, one thing I would like to tell you that in quantum mechanics, because of the uncertainty principle, we cannot evaluate Lx and Ly simultaneously, Ly and Lz simultaneously, Lx and Lz simultaneously. Uh, let me discuss, let me prove this commutation relation of Lx and Ly. Lx and Ly if Lx Ly commute, then this commutation relation must be equal to zero. So I have just written the expressions of Lx Ly from 1 and 2 here. I have done some algebra. Uh, now these things will commute because this contains x component of position, y component of position. So this will commute. Pz is there. And this contains z components of position in common and y and x components of momentum. So these things will commute. We are left with these two terms, first term and the fourth term. First term can be written like this. And this fourth term can be written like this. Now, uh, when I apply the commutation relation of Z and PZ and uh, here also Z and PZ. I'm extremely sorry for the disturbance, for the noise. Now this, um, from this commutation relation, it will give me minus H cross because Z comma PZ, that will give me plus H cross. So I have to write minus H cross here. And I have to write plus H cross here. And what I am getting is this. And this is nothing but LZ from the expression 3. So LX and LY do not commute. Instead, from their commutation relation, I get a value which contains the LZ operator. This is my equation 4. Likewise, I can find out the relation between LY, LZ which is IH cross LX and commutation relation of LZ LX will give me IH cross LY. Uh, this is very easy to remember. Like uh, if I write LX LY LZ, then the commutation relation of LX LY will give me LZ. LY LZ will give me LX and LZ LX will give me LY. So uh, this is 
uh, circulating like this in the anti-clockwise direction. Now the total angular momentum, actually the square of the total angular momentum is given by Lx square plus Ly square plus Lz square. Let's see what happens if I want to find out the commutation relation of Lx and L square. So this L square can be written as Lx square plus Ly square plus Lz square. Now I need to use this relation. This is a, a standard relation. Now for Lx and Lx square, those will commute. What is left with Lx Ly and Lx Lz? Here in place of AB, I will write Ly Ly and here Lz Lz. So if I use this relation for this commutation relation and this commutation relation, so from this commutation relation, I will get this using this formula. And from this term, I will get this one using this formula. Now, if I put the commutation relation of Lx Ly and Lx Lz here, I will get zero, which means that Lx square that is x, uh, Lx that is x component of the angular momentum and square of the total angular momentum is nothing but zero, which is stated in equation five. So Lx commute with L square, which means I can get the x component of the angular momentum value and the total angular momentum value also simultaneously. That means L square and Lx will have a common eigenstate. Similarly, uh, with this kind of derivation, I can evaluate Ly L square equal to 0 and Lz L square equal to 0. That means I can find out the total angular momentum and the individual angular momentums. Now we try to define J's. These are angular momentums, but in general, in quantum mechanical problems, J is denoted as the total angular momentum. Total angular momentum means it is summation of vector summation of angular momentum orbital plus angular momentum spin. Because if I consider an electron rotating in a elliptical or in circular orbit, uh, then it has, because of its rotation, it has its orbital angular momentum, uh, which is acting like this. And it has also, I mean, it's uh, going outward, I mean, it's perpendicular to the page. And uh, because of its intrinsic spin value, it has some spin, which is half for electrons, I'm saying, because it's a fermion. For bosons, it will be half. And now, so this is the spin value half. Now this could be plus half minus half because uh, electron can point upward or point downward. So its spin angular momentum could be plus half minus half and there is an orbital angular momentum L and L plus minus half or L plus minus S will give me the J value. Now uh, just uh, I'm using the angular momentum relations for Lx, Ly, Lz here. And that will give me these relations. These are similar to what I have just obtained. And uh, this is, this tells me that individual component of the total angular momentum and the total value of the angular momentum will give me, uh, I, I can evaluate the total value of the angular momentum and I can evaluate the individual components of the total angular momentum also. This is the significance of this relation.